I've rolled the rover round to the pan. Let's take a look at his view immediately. There he is. Now, Ronald is having a little bit of trouble. There he goes. He was placed by Connor Teague's a marathon distance from where he wanted to be. So now he's traveling unaccompanied through the wilderness and trying desperately to make it on time. But of course, the summer vegetation's not making it easy for the fellow, is it? Now, there are the white gomfrinas. I think that's what those plants are there. No, he's, no, he's not stuck. Here we go. We'll just keep going over some guinea grass. Come on, Ronald. Be strong. Be brave. See how clever he is. He got over that stick. Another bit of uh, erogrostus there. <laughs> it's quite cool. Now, his picture is not great because there's not a lot of light at the moment. And as the light starts to come up, so he will start to give you a more high-definition look of the mongoose eye view that he... Oh, hang on a second. There's some nice flowers there, Ronald. Let's have a look at those, shall we? Hmm. I think you may have killed them, Ronald. I think you drove straight over them, and they're all now lying flat on the ground. You need to stop sooner. He's also got a little bit of a delay in his controls, which means that you kind of have to guess where he's going. No, there we go. Okay, forward we go. We're going to go and park him next to the pan because next to the pan seems to be the place where he's had the most action. And down by the dam side of things, it's just a little bit more difficult because the vegetation is that much thicker and the mud is that much thicker as well. Ooh. Look at him going through this forest. Isn't he brave? He's such a brave fellow, is our Ronald. Now, I think there's all those little white things there are called gomfrina, something similar to that, and it's been frustrating me because I used to know, and I've been trying to find some kind of reference to it, but I'm failing. Anyway, I will check that up again as well. Now, apparently we're going to have a drone shot. I just don't know where the drone is. Oh, there it is. Wonderful. This is amazing. <laughs> There is Ronald, tirelessly soldiering across that field of Gomfrina. And look at him go. Isn't that wonderful? And there's the drone in the, in the middle of the rover shot. There we go. There is Marvin, the mate, Matrice. Uh, the drone commander hates it when I call his uh, drone Marvin. He thinks it's not a very manly term for his drone, but I don't really care. I think Marvin's a wonderful name. Right, we're going to just watch the drone now. Oh, this is a great shot, especially the movement in it. That's a thing for us to remember. Now, we'll just try and position Ronald quite carefully. Oh, we don't. We have, to let go. <laughs> we have to let go of the controls every so often because when you get to this delicate stage here, what you don't want to do is overdrive him because he will then end up in the water and Alex Voz will, well, have me arrested by the KGB, which doesn't exist anymore. Right, yeah, just a little bit further up onto the top there. Yeah, and I think that's where we're going to park. We'll wait for the Hardy Dars to arrive there on those logs, and maybe something will come down and drink, perhaps some elephants, and I was really hoping yesterday for some wild dogs. That would have been very special indeed. So we'll leave Ronald there. Can we have one more look at the drone view? Because I just think that's too, too lovely. There he is. And hopefully those hardy dars love to sit on that log, which I suspect has been strategically placed there. I'm not sure that that is a, a natural placement. Anyway, there it is. 